that make sense? Yeah. How do you know your, like, know your life's purpose? We were talking about this earlier with, uh, with you, Dave, weren't we? Like, it's, it's not that easy to know your life's purpose. Um, the best way to know your life purpose is work on, re on removing all of your fearful emotional conditions first. Within each of us, we have we have a unique personality uh, as a, as our soul. It has a unique personality that's not the same as anyone else. So, um, this idea that when we all reach at one, we'll all be somehow zened out and blissed out and exactly the same is actually not true. As we get closer to God and grow in love, we actually become more unique in in a loving way in what our unique qualities and attributes and our desires and passions are. So for yourself, your passionate desires, which for most of us are untapped as yet, because we have so much fear, um, but yours will be quite distinct from mine and AJ's. Um, ours will be quite similar because we're soulmates. Um, so for yourself and your soulmate, as you grow in love, your passions and desires will seem to come closer and closer together. But for, for most of us, because we have so much fear, there's a lot of expectation as we grow up, we, we very quickly as children lose touch with what our passions and desires are. So, yeah, so for, for most of us, some of us are fortunate to reach adulthood and still have a burning desire for something and love to go to their job and <laughs> do what they do. <laughs> but for the majority of us, it's a process of, and for myself personally, it's been about um, recognising and releasing my fears that, that has brought me closer and closer to what my passions are. Because it's, it's sort of, they're the limiting factor. Once the fear is gone and you can, like if you imagine winning the lotto, what would I do? And I, but then you have to think, and I had no fear. That would, would <laughs> you know, that, what would I do then? And for, for a lot of us, we can't even feel what we would do then because the fear is so instilled in us. Yeah. So once you release a lot of these fears, you'll be left with your passions and desires uh, as the most prominent thing. Once you're left with your passions and, and desires, you can then develop them, and they can be developed in any way like possible. So it might start out with a little small burning desire to do some art that you never ever done all of your life until you know you, you retired, and then you, you realise, oh, I've got a bit of time on my hands now. It'd be nice to do a bit of art that I've always wanted to do, right? And then after a while, the passion becomes like a, why wasn't I doing this when I was 20? You know, that, that kind of thing. And and that's often how it happens for us in discovering a passion and desire. The reason why Mary's brought up passions and desires in the question with regard to my life purpose is that God doesn't actually have a purpose for you specifically except that you follow your burning passions and desires. And that will actually be your life's purpose. So God created us as a unique individuals, every one of us unique, and every one of us have unique passions and desires as a result of that. And when you express those passions and desires in harmony with divine love and divine truth completely, that's when you become the best possible creature you could have ever become. And that's the creature that God designed you to become. But it's about activating your free will to become that, if that makes sense. So in the first century, in, in my late teens, I started connecting with my passions and desires. And I started realising that my passions and desires were all about like illustrating love to the world like and going and and in fact I had what you would call the messiah complex if you like right um, <laughs> in the sense of <laughs> yeah I was delusional after all right and the, and the and the messiah complex that it's called nowadays that I that I felt inside of myself is that I wanted to demonstrate that man could have this unique relationship that I knew at that stage and I could start feeling at this stage was real that every single person on earth could have this unique relationship with God. And then I started realising that that was actually my foremost passion. And all I did then was just follow my foremost passion. Does that make sense? And that became something that then changed the world in a lot of ways. When you follow your foremost passion, that will also change the world in a lot of ways. Does that make sense? But it will be a different way than my foremost passion changed the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, up the back, thanks. This one, do I ask? Is this working? Yeah. No. 
I just wanted to ask, uh, how do you, what do you see is going to 